Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. Uh, what you're looking at there is a small uh, inductor that is very commonly found in uh, television set chassis. You can see it's pretty small. It has actually two windings, not four. The two on either side are just separated by a little divider there. And it's on a square, uh, a a rectangular frame and it's wound by uh, the snapping of the bobbin on there and then spinning the bobbin around and then after it's wound you put the pins on or the machine does and I've soldered, I've removed it from its circuit board and soldered some leads to it uh, and I've used this in a jewel thief, it's a one-to-one -one winding but it works really well as a jewel thief transformer and what, I w what I'm going to do now is uh, uh, determine the resonant frequency of, uh, of this little transformer uh, using a function generator and an oscilloscope Okay, so I've got the, this, these two leads here, the red lead and this black lead are the outputs of the, oh, sorry about the light, of the F43 function generator crowded up over there. Um, oh, I got, uh, got a package in the mail today uh, of some of my old test equipment. That's a DP101 uh, fast rise time pulse generator. Uh, but we're not going to use that. We'll use the F43 and uh, uh, sweep across frequencies with it. Okay, so I've got the output of the F43 coming over here through this uh, uh, 54.3 ohm resistor to one of the coils, and I'll hook up the other lead to that uh, in just a moment there. And then the measured coil is the other one, and I've just got it hooked directly to a 10x oscilloscope probe. And uh, so we'll be looking at the, um, at the scope display. All right. Now, usually I put the B channel right up here on the, on the radical line. Um, sorry. Usually I put the B channel up here, but we're going to need a little bit more room, so I've actually moved it down one radical line. So this is the B channel baseline here then this is the square wave signal that we're putting in. I like to do resonance testing with a square wave, uh, but you could use a sine wave too. It uh, doesn't really matter all that much. Um, and it's, ba it's a 5 volt peak to peak baseline, and its right baseline is right around there, 5 volt peak to peak signal. And we're going to leave the amplitude of that the same throughout this test. And what we're going to be concerned with is the amplitude that we see on this signal. Okay, so let me go ahead and hook up the function generator to the stimulating coil or the primary. Okay, so right now we're at a frequency of one kilohertz, really, really slow. One kilohertz, and we're looking at the scope or at the oscilloscope at a time base of half a millisecond per division. So it's really pretty slow. Uh, and what you're seeing here is the, the distortion in the input signal caused by the induction in the output signal, or the transformer's mutual induction. You'll see that this nice square wave shape has been, become distorted. But we're not, not really concerned about anything here except the amplitude of this output signal. And I can see it's got some it's got some pretty good spikes. We're looking at that output signal, the B channel right now at five volts per division as well. 10x attenuated probe. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just use the function generator to sweep frequencies. So now I'm going increasing, 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 increasing frequencies. Okay. And we haven't seen any peak to peak change. Sometimes it's better actually to do this with with a blurry display. And it'll get blurry in a few minutes. We're still only seeing 5, 10, 15, about 16 volts peak to peak on the output there with this 5 volt peak to peak input. So we've hit 4 kilohertz. So now I'm going to go back and change to the 10 kilohertz range, and then we'll sweep the 10 kilohertz range. Still, still not seeing any big amplitude change on the top there. Seeing my camera trying to focus on it. Okay. So now we're at uh, 40 kilohertz and we haven't seen anything happening so 
let's go to the 100 kilohertz range okay now I'm sweeping 200 kilohertz or oh, you see a little bit of a change in amplitude there so that's I'm going a, around about 2. Point th about uh, 230 kilohertz right there okay but let's keep going oh uh, there's another little amplitude change right there that's about 260 kilohertz oh and look at that that's an even bigger one at about 350 kilohertz and then there we have to change ranges again so let's go to the 1 megahertz range and uh, now I'm, I'm at the top of the dial here at 4 so I'll sweep downward so from 1 megahertz we're going down notice that amplitude changing wow wowzers okay something tells me that's our resonance okay let me get that back here and let's, uh, let's change the time base so we can actually see the signal okay you can see that even though I'm putting in a square wave it's become rounded at these higher frequencies but the output is a beautiful sine wave okay so now I'm gonna sweep again and as you can see as I approach the resonant frequency that output sine wave gets bigger and bigger and bigger until right there right about there it peaks let's go beyond that point and see if there's another resonance someplace there's a little harmonic resonance there another one but there's nothing there major like this nice pure sine wave really really amplified and by going back and forth like that and then reading I get a frequency of about 2.5 megahertz just under 2.5 megahertz for this resonant oscillation okay and uh, so let's just take and get a real measurement of that by going to the Phillips with the output here. Okay. All I have to do is plug that in over here. And there is our precise resonant frequency of 2.415843 kilohertz, or about 2.4 megahertz. Okay. Okay, so that's how you determine the resonant frequency of a coil. You drive one side with the function generator, monitor the other side with the oscilloscope, sweep the frequencies until you get this nice sinusoidal peak and at the maximum output voltage that's where you take your reading of the resonant frequency. Thank you for watching.